Hello. I pray that you're well today. We continue in the book of Exodus with the life of Moses. In chapter 2, in verse 11, it says, One day, after Moses had grown up, much time passes, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. Remember, the terminology was that they were treated ruthlessly. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people, and looking this way and that, seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you going to think of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, he, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. And some shepherds came along and drove them away. But Moses got up and came to the rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to Reuel, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? He asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I become a foreigner in a foreign land. During that long period, the king of Egypt died, and the Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. And God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob. And so God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Most people believe that Moses had, as he lives 120 years, he had a 40-year stint and a 40-year stint and a 40-year stint. A 40-year stint in Egypt, a 40-year stint in Midian, and another 40-year stint going back to Egypt and then into the wilderness as he helps them exit Egypt. Chapter 3 says this, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. And Moses saw that through the bush, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. And why does this bush not burn up? When Moses saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place you're standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And as Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look at God. And he said, I've seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because they're slave drivers. I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jezebites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I've seen the way the is is Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And verse 11, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? You know what I'd like to believe? I'd like to believe that if I saw a burning bush that did not burn up and God was speaking to me out of that burning bush, I'd like to say, God, whatever you want. But Moses is really honest. Probably the same way we would. Who am I to do this? Who are you? Who am I? You and I are chosen by God to do God's work in this time, in your life, in the set of relationships that you have. And, and I pray that you can see your purpose and your meaning and your value. Who are you? You are chosen by God. You are picked out. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks that you tell us who we are, that you lead and guide our lives, and that you've given us purpose and meaning that you have sent us into relationships to be built up, to build up others and to strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless you today. God's grace.